Don't be confused between what people say you are and who you know you are. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we have a great message that will help you understand why knowing yourself is so important. Enjoy. Part of spiritual development is to recognize the satanic tendencies that characterize you and to fully wrestle with them and to and to integrate them that's the thing it's it's not so much to cast them away it's to transmute them you know and you can see the difference between people who've done that and people who haven't at least to some degree because people who haven't integrated the shadow at all are naive and you can tell that when you look at them and you can tell that when you talk to them and because they're naive they're often resentful as well because they get taken advantage of and someone who's integrated that more they're dangerous in the, in the martial arts sort of way, which is they're dangerous, but they don't have to be, they don't have to use it because their presence radiates. What would you say? It, it doesn't radiate threat exactly. Well, certainly strength, but it's 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 the potential for havoc. That's the right way of thinking about it. There's a. There's an implicit potential for havoc, and that's really necessary. It, it's one of the things that gives people self-respect. This is an interesting thing about the integration of the shadow, because recognizing yourself as the locus of evil, let's say, actually, in some sense, gives you far more respect for yourself, strangely enough, because the same respect that you might have for a wild animal or even a monster it's like, and so then maybe you learn to treat yourself differently. Like, I, I think this is particularly true with regards to the discipline of children. You know, if you know that you're a monster and that that will manifest itself in your life, consciously or unconsciously, and if it's unconsciously, it's, it's, it's not good, then you become better at disciplining children. And the reason for that is that you don't want to expose them to your dark side. And so if they behave and don't provoke you, which means they'll also behave for other people, then you don't, the monstrous part can stay in abeyance. And then that's great. But if you don't understand yourself as capable of wreaking havoc, and that can be the kind of havoc that unfolds over decades, right? Because if you're going to abuse a child, it's the primitive form of abuse is the physical abuse. The sophisticated form of abuse is the continual undermining of the child's courage across perhaps their entire life. And that there's a terribly monstrous element to that. And if you're not respected properly by the child, say, you will absolutely take revenge on them. And, you know, that's the whole, in some sense, that's the whole Freudian psychoanalytic story. It's, it's not all of it, but it's a huge part of it. So, Interesting that... Um you, you say that you have to accept the fact that you're dangerous or become dangerous because I'd also say that if you haven't done that kind of shadow work, if you haven't made friends with your anger, if you haven't integrated it, you're actually more dangerous. Yes, because definitely. Because then things will happen that will, it will come out in a way that you don't expect. Right, it comes out disintegrated. So it comes out as an autonomous spirit, right, under no one's control. And, and that's like a burst of rage, let's say. You know, when you when you hear about a mother who's done something terrible to one of her children, it's that's the reason is that, you know, she's maybe she's just been laid off, maybe she went out and, and had too much too much to drink, maybe she's hung over, you know, she's she's angry and lonesome and she's overwhelmed by the responsibility of the children and she has a child who's testing and she doesn't know how to limit it. And one day the child tests at exactly the wrong time and it's like mayhem and everybody goes well what happened it's like well seven terrible things came together at the same time and produced this outburst of disintegrated rage and like look the hell out when that happens you know so yeah you you want to have that 
you, it e you either have that or it has you. Those are the options. And you don't become safe by being castrated. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.